Hey guys, Synthro6 here, and welcome back for another episode of Quest Log. So this one's gonna be episode 10, and it's gonna be another Persona 5 video, but this time instead of a first impressions, it's gonna be a full game review of all of my thoughts and everything about the game. So a couple of days ago, I finally finished Persona 5, beat everything, went through the tr true ending, and unlock all of the personas I wanted and currently I'm on New Game Plus and on New Game Plus I've just reached, uh, spoiler alert, Matarame's palace which is the second palace of the game and currently my, la my lineup includes Yoshitsune, Satanael, it includes Lucifer, it includes Alice and with that said you can pretty much tell that all of those are super high level personas and I got them all in my first playthrough meaning that I ended up being around like level 97 by the end of my first uh, campaign, meaning everything pretty much was done. The reason I'm starting New Game Plus is because there are quite a handful of uh, confidants that I didn't achieve. So going back to do those like, you know, the the mayor guy, the, the Sun Arcana, I didn't finish Tower, which is kind of silly because I have Yoshitsune, he's the Tower Persona. So I had to struggle to let up, to level him up in order to get Hasutobi and all of that. But, you know, Tower, I didn't do Sojiro's confidant. I didn't do uh, the reporter chick's confidant. Uh, I think she's like the devil one. Yeah. So there are a couple of ones that I still want to finish. And, oh yeah, I didn't do Haru's, which was the big one. Because I hadn't maxed my proficiency at the time. And that's kind of a necessity for when you do her confidant. So for that, completely missed it. Didn't have any time to do it. And I spent too much time leveling up my stats and getting everything ready. And I unlocked some of them just way too late. So going back in this time, hopefully I can get through all of those so I can get the full scope of the story. Uh, with that said, here's my final thoughts on the game. So I've played Persona 3, Persona 4, and now Persona 5. I've also played Shin Megami Tensei 4 on the 3DS, but that's something completely different and irrelevant for this particular topic. So you can say I have some history with the Persona series. I wanted to get into Persona 1 and 2. Uh, I, just, I have them on the PS Vita, and I just never touched them. I, I never got around to it. Which is a shame because I hear they're really good and Persona 2 supposedly has the best story of the bunch from what I've heard. But this one's about Persona 5 and I'm going to be comparing it mostly to Persona 4. Uh, so here are my final thoughts and you know opinions on the game. So first of all, the story, brilliant. Loved it. Loved it from beginning to end. For me as a big anime fan... This had all the tropes, all the silliness, all the quirkiness, you know, and mixed in with a couple of serious notes here and there. So it was just a perfect package experience for me. Uh, the thing that made the biggest difference was that sort of like rebellion, rebellious team and overarching plot in, in the whole game. By the time I finished, it was 90 hours. So it was, it's a pretty long game. You are going to be spending a lot of time with these characters and for you to spend so much time with the characters and not get tired of them, that speaks volumes as to how well written they are. Without a doubt, this particular cast of Persona is my favorite cast of all of the games. Um, my second favorite cast, overall cast, is Persona 4, but my favorite main character is the one of Persona 5, followed closely by the Persona 3 main character. And I have read the mangas and watched the movies and all that stuff, and I know they have different names and whatever. But that's pretty much uh, what I think of the characters. I think they're very cleverly written, and they're all very likable. They all have very contrasting personalities, and it's just great overall. Um, now, as far as the story, it tended to get a little repetitive towards the end, where it was pretty much the same sort of structure. Hey, there's a bad guy. Oh, look, he's abusing your team member. Hey, let's go kick their ass. That was pretty much the whole span of the game for 90 hours until the very end where, once again, spoiler alert, if you haven't reached yet, you probably shouldn't be here in this video. So 
by the end of it, it got supernatural, kind of how like all the other personas got, like Persona 4, it ended up being, you know, Izanami, the one that controlled everything, and it was all the work of some other, like, god. That's pretty much the case here as well. Uh, for all of you who stuck around until the very end, you can pretty much tell that it was all some, you know, weird god's fault that everything happened and why your life is so messed up in the game. So, it got really convoluted and really strange, and the game expected you not to understand what was going on, which was hilarious because pretty much all your dialogue options from a certain point onward was like, what the fuck is this? I'm so confused. What's going on? So even the game itself is taking the piss out of you for not knowing what's going on, which is hilarious to me. It's like the game expects you to not know what's going on. So uh, I thought, I think that was a nice twist, but by the end of everything, it, it was a roller coaster, man. It was great. Starting from the introduction, really making you hate these villains, really making you want to take revenge on them, and all of these things. It's, it's such an immaculate experience as an RPG gamer, and it really reignites a lot of people's interest in, you know, Japanese RPGs, which have been dying a lot lately. And they were, it was sort of rejuvenated by Final Fantasy XV, and now it is solidified you know, in by Persona 5. So it's sort of kind of like a Japanese renaissance for games. A uh, lot of good stuff coming out of Japan nowadays. So as far as game mechanics goes, this was the most dynamic Persona I've played. Uh, usually the Persona games, they have like these big, huge dungeons that are randomly generated. This one actually had a structure. So you had like... A way to go from beginning to end it was very thematic so each each uh, major palace was different from each other which was a nice twist and you never felt at least gameplay wise besides like besides the actual combat nothing else felt super repetitive because you had all of these different pos puzzles and all these sorts of little game quirks per palace that you had to deal with. So it made each palace feel unique. You know, whether it was Kamoshita's castle or Madarami's museum or Futaba's pyramid, you know, Kaneshiro's flying saucer thing, you know, all of that. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nokumura's freaking factory was awesome as well. And... <laughs> Personally, my favorite palace of the bunch was Sai and Nijima's uh, palace, which was the casino. Because, leading me to the next point of the game, the music is on point, man. That soundtrack, especially for the casino, Whims of Fate, I had it stuck in my head for like a solid five days. That's how catchy the, game, the music in this game is. The presentation of the game is just brilliant. It's very stylish. You can instantly tell this is Persona, but at the same time, you can distinguish it from the other Persona games. That's what was lacking between Persona 3 and 4. You, it kind of felt like it was a reskinned version of the same game in a different setting, which was kind of upsetting, but not really because Persona 4 was actually a super immaculate game as well. Pretty much a system seller for, for the PlayStation Vita for any Persona fan. If you haven't tried it out, you should check it out. That's a brilliant game as well. Um, but that's pretty much the, the, the overarching plot now. For, for the positives of the game. Super stylish, great music, great story, lovable characters. Uh, keeps you super interested and super engaged. You know, it's just more Persona. It's more Persona. What else could you ask for? So those are all the positives. Now, I wouldn't really call these negatives. I would just call them, you know, they, they kind of put a damper on the experience. Uh, and that would be that there are a lot of things that you can easily miss if you don't explore in the game, which is a good thing and a bad thing because I got to like maybe August without realizing that I could have started one particular confidant literally like two months earlier. And that eventually led to me not being able to finish some of the other confidants because spoiler alert, you know, Hifumi the star confidant, you need to max it out in order to make Lucifer. And you can't make Satanael on New Game Plus unless you have Lucifer. So that's one of the ones that you need to make. And 
it, it's just easy to miss stuff. You walk past something, you don't check something out, you don't ask around, and you're gonna miss a lot of things. So that's one tip for people that are just starting out the game, which you probably even should have been watching this video, honestly, but since you're still here, I might as well give you some pointers. Um, do not just teleport to your destinations because you're gonna miss a lot of the story. You're gonna miss very blatant things. Like the reason I couldn't craft a lot of my gear was because I never thought to buy the laptop and then fix it because I never checked there again. Uh, I would have never found the TV had I not gone there and I thought that was the only thing that they sold. So I never thought to check more than once at every store and that was a real crying shame. And uh, unfortunately, that's what happened in the game. I missed quite a few stuff. So New Game Plus is gonna be, you know, hopefully I'm gonna fix everything that I missed on the first playthrough. Uh, that was the first thing super easy to miss a lot of things so explore everything check every store do everything you possibly can uh, second negative it was a little bit too easy um, I think one of the abilities that you unlock which is the gallows that you can sacrifice other personas uh, to give more experience to one particular persona you unlock it I believe like around June June 6 something like that after May after Matarame's whole debacle um, with that you can sacrifice one persona and give a skill to another persona that's inherited so that made a lot of personas easy to make uh, particularly you know with skills like arms master and spell master you could just sacrifice like Ishtar or Uriel or Koryu or any of these people into like a Satan or a Lucifer or even a Yoshitsune and just give them both arms, arms master, spell master. And I believe that's kind of like a cop out, but not really because you arguably in Persona 4 with the skill cards and, and you know, in the restaurant and all that stuff. That was fairly easy to make as well, but it made the game a little bit too easy. Uh, the other part was that there are these absolutely broken ways of leveling up and getting money in the game. Like, I'm sure if all of you are serious about playing Persona, you, you've seen these things because it does take, it does make it easier to go through the game and all of the social links when you have the money or when you have, you know, the levels. And if you, if you don't know, some of the bosses in Mementos, you can confuse them with Palimpa. And if you have like at least uh, 50 coefficient for luck, they drop probably 40,000 to 50,000 per turn that they're confused. Sometimes they drop an item, sometimes they drop like ludicrous amounts of money. So that was the first broken thing. I ended up the game with about, I maxed out my money and I still have like 5 million in this playthrough. And uh, that's because I spent a lot on Satanaya and all that stuff. Well, technically I went into New Game Plus with 7 million because I bought all the super special gear and all of that stuff uh, coming for the new game plus because I, I already knew from the very beginning I was going to play through it again. So the other thing is on the flu season, if you go into mementos and you wait for the Reaper, uh, especially if you have maxed out Mishima's confidant and Hifumi's confidant, you can immediately escape from a battle and Mishima's maxed out rank, it gives all of your backup members the same amount of XP that the new members have and so you could just go fight a reaper and there would be a chance that he would be inflicted with despair and once he did he would kill himself in literally three turns and you would get 72,000 EXP so you did that a couple of times and suddenly you're level 90 something and it only takes like about an hour or two of grinding instead of versus, you know, like a full 10 hours of actually doing it the legit way. So um, that was one of my complaints where I was like, eh, it makes it easier. But at the same time, I did abuse of that same method. So I just knew I wanted Yoshitsune by the end and he was a super high level. And I knew that if I just went through the game regularly, 
it was it, it wasn't gonna happen trust me it, it was not gonna happen I, there no way I would have been level 86 or level 79 my bad by the by the end of the game had I not crafted had I, had I not killed a bunch of Reapers beforehand um, the same thing could be said for persona 4 with the gold hands that I farmed uh, in one of like the later levels and I just got Hillel and just morning starred them repeatedly and it just decimated them and then I would go back to to the fox and he would heal me and everything would be fine so uh, when you consider that pretty much almost the same thing except it definitely took me a lot longer in Persona 4 because I actually had to grind for it versus you know the reaper glitch you would just escape battle and come back until he was inflicted with despair and I believe it was a cheap way of doing it uh, at least in the other games, you could legitimately grind for for all of the things. And the Reaper battle, it didn't leave you with anything of consequence. Like, it, it, it didn't leave you with, with anything super strong or like in Persona 4 where that's how you got the biggest weapons. The best weapons was by killing the Reaper. And that, unfortunately, the item you get from the Reaper is not even worth mentioning here because it's it's useless. Well, it's not useless, but you get the point. I think it has damage, but you can't evade. You can't evade any attacks at any point. But that was that was my issues with it. It was a little bit too easy. Uh, if you know your way around strategy and, and you know the whole persona aspect of everything, uh, the whole game becomes a whole lot easier. So for veterans of the persona franchise, it might seem a little easy, even on the higher difficulty settings. It's still, a, you know, decently easy. There's only a couple of bosses that really give you any sort of issues whatsoever. But aside from that, you know, you use Charge, and then you use Hasutobi, and pretty much everything dies at the end. So that's one of the things about Persona. Yoshitune is still as overpowered as ever. And, uh, yeah, as far as any Personas that I recommend, I do recommend, highly recommend Alice. I highly recommend Lucifer. Highly recommend Yoshitsune. In New Game Plus, you might as well get Satanael because he does event see after you craft him, he does become part of your compendium. So once you finish the game for the second time, if you want to replay everything again, you can just get Satanael again at the very beginning of the game. Just make sure that you have him with Victory Cry so you can which is his like once he reaches level ninety nine you'll be good to go by the time you you reach um by the time you reach the, the the strength arcana and you go through all the processes so you can craft satanile if you have everything ready by the time you should be ranked three with the full arcana meaning that he should be at level 97 so you only have to once you get to like june 5th or 6th you can sacrifice arguably you know which at Lucifer if you have the money twice and he'll reach level 99 and you'll have victory cry and then the the, whole, the rest of the game is is done and over with so those are some of the ones that I recommend Yoshitune by far the best Alice really good for just getting rid of the trash mobs that are just laying around uh, Lucifer because he's just awesome and Ishtar is one of my super because she has salvation and spell master and all of that and all of these people don't really have a weakness. Oh, that's another one. You can train your persona so they don't, so they can nullify all of those weaknesses. So my Alice doesn't have a weakness. My uh, my Lucifer does not have a weakness. Ishtar doesn't have a weakness. Satanael, of course, doesn't have any weaknesses. And Yoshitsune just naturally doesn't have any weaknesses. So that's something you gotta consider as well. And yeah, Persona Five, completely immaculate game. For me personally, it's my favorite game of the year so far, and I have played some of the really good games that have come out. I have yet to touch Horizon because I was I knew I was going to get super deep into Persona 5, and I don't regret it. So soon enough, you might see a Horizon uh, footage here on the channel, so look forward to that. Aside from that, that has been episode 10 of Questlog. Uh, join me for the next episode. It's going to be coming up within the next couple of days, possibly maybe even tomorrow. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe.
and please leave a comment down below if you wanna if you wanna suggest any topics for me to do in the future. And thank you very much. Have a nice day.